sound test room. Hey, hello everybody, welcome to the sound test room. So today we're going to take a look at Galileo and Tonestack. And I wanted to do, I wanted to uh, try and create like kind of um rock, uh, rock type of 70s classic rock, sort of prog rock uh, organ sound um, they used to get from the B3s. Now look, this is not, for you purists out there watching this, Galileo, this is a Galileo organ. Is not a B3 emulation. It's an instrument in its own right. Okay, you can get it to sound like a B3. It takes a lot of work, but you know, it's not a B3. All right. But with this particular thing, I set up this uh, patch in for this and for Tone Stack. I watched the documentary not long ago about a, a legendary John Lord, Deep Purple, genius, brilliant keyboard player, brilliant composer. And he was talking about how he, that someone asked him how he got the classic rock organ sound. You know they, the sound that they used a lot, and it was it was really weird because he said he, they he completely dissed the Leslie uh, from he tried different things, disconnected the Leslie from the from the Hammond altogether, and rooted the out the Hammond's output directly into a guitar amp. Okay, so I'm not trying to recreate that exact sound. That just, just gave me the idea for the for the video, and I thought, oh, that might be nice to try that. So what I did first of all was get this uh, sound here, which is very very dry. Removed all the effects. If you want to copy this, basically, you can. You can just pause it, and then this is how it was set up. And then there's nothing. It's all switched off. All the effects are switched off. It's a very, very basic patch. I called it Lord of Rock, just so it reminded me. It's hardly rock, is it, you know? So if we uh, switch tone stack on and then head on over there, this is the effects chain I set up. And I'll, I'm going to tell you why I set it up this way as well and go through my thinking behind this particular thing. But as a, as a, you'll see at the moment, there's a classic distortion in there, which is switched off, and also a polyoct, which is switched off. And then the chain runs from uh, the treble booster, which is super, super, super important. But I'll, I'll just show you this. I'm just going to play the sound. This is the sound. So um, you've just heard the sound of the actual, uh, of Galileo without without the effect, which is this, which is very uh, dry and bland. And then um, this is it with uh, the, the effects. So it's totally, totally different sound and it has that kind of a, that kind of a. Okay, so it's very cool. So you can hear now at the end of the chain here, we'll start at the end. There's a cosmic echo. You can hear that. And you can hear that there's a plate reverb. And this, these are placed at the end of the chain after the amp, after the cab, because I wanted it to sound like you were in the audience. If you were in the audience, you would hear uh, the reverb, obviously, after it left the speakers. So there's the thing behind that. And I also wanted slight, if it was a kind of a bigger, biggish kind of theater or biggish arena, you would still get some, some bouncing around. And it wouldn't be quite even because um, you know, it would, depending on where you were, it would bounce differently. So I used the multi-head for that. Um, and also I wanted to do it, so say say the theatre was empty, and plates are great for this, but say the theatre was empty, and there was just sound checking. You know, that's the kind of... is what the front of house guy would hear probably when he was mixing and of course as people come in you know you can take the sound down to, to pretty much as people will absorb I mean in the mix this sounds right you know so 
So anyway, so there we go. And the distortion was added because I thought it would be, um, you know, he was saying that he would do solos um, while well, whilst playing the organ. It'd be nice to, and this I don't know if he did this. It's probably not. But I thought, well, if I wanted to do, you, know, you can't play this with chords. It sounds terrible. But if we add a distortion here now, we can. Doesn't sound so good with chords. Because you could play power chords, so you're playing a, a, a root in a fifth, perfect fifth. But mainly that was just for lead. And then I thought, well, okay, so if we've got this going now, and then what else can I add? And I was playing around with different modulations, different effects and stuff, and tried the poly octave. And I tried the poly octave. It's somewhere else, and I, th I liked it, and I thought, but that's too, way too overpowered. And I think it was maybe in front of the distortion, so it was after the after the uh, after the Optivibe and the um, and the rotary uh, box that I'd put in as well. I don't know if you knew from over here, but it sounded crap. <laughs> it just it was too loud. But now uh, I set it like this, and you get this is so. Here's the the sort of basic rock patch. And when you add the poly octave, it gives this kind of anthemic. Too much for chords again, but. And look, doesn't sound so good fast, but slow like a. Okay, so here was the thinking. So if we take the um, the treble boosted off, it sounds naff. Okay, so the treble booster has to stay in at the beginning of the chain the whole time. The Opti vibe was. If we take it's not it's not doing a lot actually to be fair, but if we if we play the sound as, as a chord, it, it works nice as a sustain chord. So if I was playing something nice like uh, this is an E flat with um, oct two octave uh, E flat uh, root notes, and it's, um, I think it's uh, what would it be? Um, a sec, let me see. First inversion of E flat. Um, if we drop the Optivibe out, then I'll drop it back in. See? It's nice. It's not doing a lot, but it's, it's really nice. And we could have it on vibrato. That's chorus, but it's nicer on there. And then moving along the rotary box. Okay, so this is kind of kind of replacing the Leslie, but with an effect instead, just in case. So you've got this kind of like let's play. Um, Have a th three different you could like I mean you can do the uh, you could add the distortion for the lead you get some weird harmonics but it still sounds quite nice so the amp that was the the original kickoff point was the amp um it had to go through an amp I tried different things. There's a little bit of reverb coming through on the amp. Got a lot of presence. 
and the top end. Not so much mids, backed off the mids a little bit because I can control the mids with the EQ. That's kind of it. Now, here's the thing. Originally, when the patch was put together, I we before I put the cab in and this uh, mic placement, but mic microphone use was important as well. I'll show you that as well. So before I put the cab in or the EQ, there was the sound. And you can hear, see, you can hear the, you can hear the echo a lot more. And it kind of sounds weird and wavy, but it also sounded too, too modern and too digital. So first of all, I thought, well, I, I'm going to add a cab. So we need to have a cab. Tried different cabs, settled on this one. So we'll add the cab. Makes a massive difference to the sound. But took out, it took out all the bass end. So, so you can hear that. You listen through headphones is best. There's a bass. Put the in back in and it's, it's, it goes. So then I thought, well, I'm going to have to add an EQ, and I'll add an EQ after. It did make, playing with the basses, the bass is nearly right up on the cab anyway. It's not going to help, so the guitar EQ made a massive difference to that. So it set as it is, that really adds the depth. playing makes you know instead of it being and even if you put the polyoct in see it loses everything and if the app if the cap's not dead it's it's still naff but once you drop the EQ in huge difference so we can switch the poly oct off now. So yeah, the other thing was swap out the speakers, uh, the the microphones. That's the most authentic. Give some top end. There you go, guys. There's um, my sort of <laughs> classic rock, classic rock interpretation. But with a few extra bits and pieces, it was nice for live. If you've got a MIDI controller in this setup, you're, you're pretty. It's pretty cool, and it's it's a lot of fun, you know. And you can play with the plate as much as you like, you know. Um, just you'll just hear the. But as we take the reverb up. Starts to disguise the uh, the multi head tape delay, the cosmic echo, um, and because you, you don't want you don't want the echo to be mental, but you don't want it to be digital or smooth. You want it to like you can even you can go even further. You can stagger the echoes even further. Um, maybe increase the number of heads a little bit. So. But then you're going to have to take the wet mix down a little bit and probably the feedback too. Like I said, it depends. You could really, um, you could saturate it too and put the flutter up. So if you were... And then when you're playing like that as well, you can hear the, the Opta vibe.
there you go. There you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel, visit us at soundtestroom.com and me, Colin or Jacob. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have, if we can. And um, please super, please donate if you can or become a patron. Patreon's great because uh, it's uh, it costs you a dollar a month. You can jump out any time you like, but it really helps us run the site and support us. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll, uh, I'll see you later.